to teach you about the sales funnel. And then I want to talk to you about the difference between growing market share and stealing market share. Because they're not the same thing and we're going to do a little of both. Okay, so this is called the sales funnel. Okay, people start at the top. That part of the funnel is the biggest, right? So the most people in the top of the funnel. And then as you move down the funnel, you get fewer and fewer people. So, you know, people are dropping out here. As you move down the funnel, you're losing people. Okay? But if you do this right, you know, the biggest part of your funnel has the most people, and then, you know, just a small amount of those people actually become clients. And here's what I want you to remember. How many people do we need dropping out of this end of the funnel? Me and you. What do you mean? How many people do we need coming all the way through this funnel to become a client? How many do we need? One. Not very many. Yeah, well, Just a few. Okay? So what I'm saying is, we don't need a, we don't need a bunch of people dropping no, out of this end of the funnel. We can't do all that work. We can't do all the work. We only need a few good clients. Okay? But, so... Let me just describe, this is the SLB sales funnel, the different stages I think we're going to be in, okay? So the top of funnels, people just aware of who we are. Who we are and what we do, okay? Those are people that meet you at a business meeting or, you know, people that get, somebody shares a newsletter or an article that we've written on a website, it's somebody that finds your profile on LinkedIn, okay? They just, they, they have a, some level of awareness that, Refine Horizons is a company that we're based in Stockton, and they have a rough idea of the kind of work that we do. Okay, so you know somebody you meet at a business meeting. Oh, hey, I'm Vanessa. I work as the assistant land planner and the client relationship manager for Refine Horizons. Oh, who's Refine Horizons? Oh, well, we're a small family-owned business in Stockton. We do land surveying and land planning, help people run real estate projects. Oh, okay. Here's my card, and they never we never hear from them again. Okay, so that's okay. They fall out of the top of the funnel, right? Now, that same person, let's say you hand them a card at a business meeting and they're in the real estate business, let's say, and they get a little curious. So they say, oh, hey, you know, I met that really nice gal last night at the business meeting. I think she said her company does land planning. And they jump on our website and they find out about our services, right? They read our services webpage or they shoot you an email and say, hey, Vanessa, do you guys do utility locating? I met you a couple weeks ago. Okay, so... They've shown some level of curiosity here, right? So they're more than just aware. They've engaged. They they interacted with us somehow. They they've gone a little bit beyond what we've just given them. Okay. Okay. Then the next level down in the funnel. This is what I call some of these people that are curious are going to be what I call engaged. Right. So they're going to be somebody that comes up to you at this, the next business meeting and say, oh, hey, you know, I've got an uncle that's a land surveyor. Or, hey, you know, I used to work on a survey crew summers when I was back when I was in high school. Or, hey, you know, my niece is going to college to be a land planner. Or, hey, you know, my, uh, my sister's kid works at the San Joaquin County Community Development Park Department and she said she's run into you before or whatever. Like, okay, so they're beyond curious. Now they're having a second conversation with us, right? Follow-up conversation. Or, hey, Vanessa, you know, I'm, I'm working on this deal, and the, and the attorney's telling me the client will only offer a quick claim deed. And, you know, and I'm not sure what that means. Have you ever heard of quick claim deed? So they've come back to have some more conversation with us. Okay, then this part of the funnel right here, this is somebody that we've helped. Answer questions. Yeah, or... and so this isn't a, they're not a client yet. So they call up and they say, hey, Vanessa, I'm working on this deal, the, the seller's attorney says they'll only give us a quick claim deed. Do you know what that means? Or, hey, Vanessa, there, there's something funky in this title report. I thought maybe you and your, you and your uh, cousin could look at it and let me know if it's something that I need to ask more questions about. Yeah, and we're going to help those people. They're not going to pay us anything. We're just going to answer questions. Okay, Dan and Dom and Armand, my land attorneys, they do that once a month. They will call me with a question. And I don't send them a bill. They just call and say, hey, here's what's going on. What do you think? Should I get a survey? How much would this cost? Right? Okay? Then eventually what happens to people in this part of the funnel is after you've provided some value, what happens to them? Eventually, mm -hmm. they become a client. Okay? So that's what's very different from selling our services compared to a lot of other stuff. So like, look, 
you know, you're going to buy an ice cream cone from somebody, you know, how many times do they got to help you before you'll buy an ice cream cone? Like, zero. Right? But because, because these are high risk transactions, right, you want to establish a level of trust with your client. And how do you establish that level of trust? Giving them, yeah, yeah. helping them. We're going to help. Assisting, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to just give you, uh, before somebody comes, becomes a client, I'm just going to give you a general rule of thumb. Okay? For us. And here's the other thing, too. Because we're not going to be the low bid guy, do I want work because we're the cheapest? No. no, we want work because people trust us and they want a good job done, right? Just like the heart surgeon you hire for your relative. Okay, so I would say as a general rule, so these are some general rules. We're going to have five to ten touches, what I call touches. Okay, and I'm going to say somewhere between three and five assists before we get somebody to be a client. Okay, so a touch is you meet somebody at a meeting, um, you know, it, it's somebody that we drop off our newsletter to, it's somebody that participates in an online survey, you know, it's somebody that visits our website, all of those things are a touch. Okay, and that's part of this you know, your touches are happening up here, okay, and maybe down here a little bit, okay. The assists are down here. You know, the, the average real estate agent or broker might call us three or four times with questions before we actually get a survey. Like, here's the funny part. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate on my buddy Dan, my land attorney. Dan has ne hasn't brought me one job. I've been working with him for five or six years. He's never brought me a job. No, we didn't. Nuh uh. Never brought me a job, Dan. He, he, he sends me all kinds of crazy clients. Dan Muller? Never brought me a job. What? Where? How many? Way to blast his last name on YouTube. How? Yeah. Sorry. He's never brought me. He's never. <laughs> call it edited out. He's never brought me a job. Okay, but. Why are you messing with him? Okay, because he's a good man. He's a good man and. He deserves free. Well, he also answers my questions, okay. land attorney questions. Okay, cool. He'll be answering right. mine. Yeah. <laughs> and Dan's partner, Armand, has brought me work. How much? Oh, we're about to get a $20,000 survey from him in Sonora. And here's the rule. Is this of, the same one that Dominic works for or different? Used to. They used to work together. Oh, okay. So here's what I want you to remember. Here, here's the thing, too. Do I, do I know when Dan might bring me a job? No, I don't know. No. I don't know. He, he can bring me a job anytime, and do I feel like Dan is taking advantage of me? No. Because we visit, he answers questions, I answer questions, yeah, right? Yeah, a mutual exchange. Yeah, right. Because you know when somebody's just trying to bleed you dry, right? And yeah, I'm like, right I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to get a real estate agent that is going to bug us all the time and never want to send us any work. Like, and at some point, we will stop talking to that person. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm not going to do a survey over the phone for you for free. Like I had those rich guys that were buying the big 10,000 acre ranch and they kept calling me. Is this lake in? Is that fence on the line? And I finally had to tell them, don't call me unless you're going to hire me to do a survey. Because they were just going to bleed me dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as a general rule, we're going to help somebody three or five times. You know, answer questions. You know, somebody's going to call up and say, hey, do you think this building's close to the property line? And we're going to look at it and we're going to say, yeah, you should get a survey. That's pretty close. So we're going to say, no, it's, it's, I think you're fine. It's way beyond the setback. Okay? So this is just a rule of thumb for you. So here's what I want you to remember. It'd be great if you get out and bring us some surveys in the next couple weeks, but for a while, take a minute, yeah. yeah, you're just going to be awareness, especially because we're a new firm. Awareness, engaging, aiding and helping. I do not want, in this business, if you go in asking for stuff first, you just people just shut you down. What do you mean? What would I ask? Trying to them? sell. Oh, like, Trying oh, to sell. You, why don't you guys send us Listen, your... Listen, you're blog. there to help people. That's what I want you to remember. That's how this business works. So when I go right? in and I, I meet them and see them, am I just... So... I just want to let you know we're new in the area? Yeah, you just and, say, hey, and, and, and we're here to help. We've got this form on our website. You can go and get a quick check of your... Any boundary and title issues you might have on your property. That's no cost. We're willing to do that. Or, hey, we'll look at your title report. No charge. We'll let you know if we see any flags in there. Like... So what that's we, something that I would be selling to the real estate yeah. or So the, here's the point. Okay. Listen, I'm going to set you up right. Am I going to send you in there to go sell something? 
No. I thought I was going to be no. so... No. You're going in there to offer what? Assistance. Hey, we've got this great resource for you. We're, we're new in town, right? We've got this great resource for you. Go check this out. If you if you got a question on your next title report, call me, fill out our form, we'll get you an answer in 24 hours. Because free. No charge. And I'll say that, no charge. That's no free. charge. We, we're trying to develop long-term relationships with the right people in the business. Okay? So, like, look, this is going to be way easier than you, because you got to feel, you got to feel sticky no, about that's that. Gonna so yeah, you don't got to feel slimy. Like, hey, we're just letting you know we're here to help. Um, and we're going to do a little newsletter with some local real estate news. Oh, and hey, I brought you a copy of our newsletter. Sign up on the website. Right? Because what you have to do before you get people to hear is you have to do this first in our business. Because that establishes trust. Mm -hmm. Right? What is your response on that? What? One to three business days? If they fill out any of those forms I've got, either the title report or the boundary land title quick check, I will get them the response right now, 24 hours. Because it literally takes me an hour. What do you to call do. those? So one is a boundary and land title quick check, and there's a form on the website I will show you. And the other one is a land survey review of a title report. So see, we're already in like, we're already, we're already, hey, here's our latest newsletter. Talks about what's happening in the Central you Valley. You have estate. all this stuff ready so I can hit the floor next week? I'm working on it. The form's ready. The boundary and land title quick check form is ready. Okay. And we talk about some of this other stuff we talk about in our binder that we need to get ready. Okay. But will I have stuff to go out on Monday or not? You're not going to go out on Monday. Okay. We're going to probably do some training Monday. Okay. Because you needed to learn what's a land title survey. You need to learn a little bit about the title business. Okay. Tuesday, you and I are going to go meet Dan. Because I got some things I want to talk to him about. I'm going to introduce you to him, and he's going to give you an idea of who you might go visit okay. in the East Bay. Okay. But part of the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to take some pressure off of you, right? Like, look, you're out there with. Well, no, I just. I, you're out with. For me, the pressure is like, okay, I need to hurry up. And okay, get but, like, look, there, but like, look. I understand it might take a while, and you're here. When you're out to visit people, you're there to offer them some great free resources, right? And, like, that's. We're providing real value there for, for no charge because I want to develop relationships with the right, right people. Why wouldn't they want to use us after that? Yeah. 